We began this lecture with two simple geometric situations. First, we wanted to look at what it would mean to take a vector in R3 and project onto the z-axis. And then we wanted to look at a situation where we had the same vector in R3 and we projected onto the xy plane. In those motivational examples, the numerics there were straightforward and we could figure out how to accomplish those projections with some matrix P. Now I want to think about the general situation, which is much more complicated, but the ideas are the same. So in general, what we want to do is we want to figure out how to project some vector onto any vector space V. So I want you to look at this figure here, and the way I want you to interpret it is, here I've drawn this plane here, V, and this plane is meant to represent some vector space V, big V. And here we have this vector in blue here called little v, and I've tried to draw this in such a way where it's apparent that this vector is not in this space big V. So the question is, what would it even mean to project this vector onto the space? Well, what we said before was that we should drop an orthogonal ray from the tip of the vector down to the space. And this defines a vector in the space called the projection, PV. And um, so now the question is, well, what would the P matrix be in this process? So here's, here's what we do. First, we start with a basis of the vector space. We rewrite V as the span of V1 through VD. Next, we take those basis vectors and we put them into the columns of a matrix. And I, I like to call that matrix X. The idea here is that by finding a basis and putting those basis vectors into the columns of a matrix X, we now know that the vector space we care about here, V, is the column space of X. And what does it mean for this projection P times V to be in the column space of X? That means that P times V is some linear combination of the columns of X. And the, the way this is typically written is we write PV equals the matrix X times vector X hat. When we write vector X hat here, we do not mean uh, what we did very, very early on, which was normalization. This X hat is just some vector. Um, and, and I'm using the X hat notation because this is uh, what people typically do in the literature. So now we know that whatever this projection vector is, it is equal to this uh, matrix X multiplied by some vector X hat. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I want to look at this vector in red here, the vector sort of defined by the orthogonal ray that we dropped down a moment ago. This is where understanding di uh, diagrams in vectors really helps. Here, we're starting at the tip of the projection vector and then we're pointing at the original vector V. Well, this is the same thing as going against the projection vector and then with the vector V. And so that vector is actually equal to V minus X times X hat, because that's the projection vector here. And the situation we're in is a situation where that difference vector is orthogonal to the column space of X, because um, the column space of X here is the vector space we care about. Well, what does it mean to be orthogonal to the column space of X? Our orthogonality condition says that's the same thing as living in the left null space. So our difference V minus X times X hat must be in the null space of the transpose of X. But now I know that this difference vector has to satisfy an equation. Since it's in the null space, when I multiply by X hat, I must get the zero vector. So X transpose uh, multiplied by the difference V minus X times X hat must equal zero. Now I can clean this equation up by uh, distributing X transpose and then, uh, and then simplifying. And that gives me X transpose X times X hat equals X transpose times V. Look who showed up to the party. It's X transpose times V uh, and that's the Gramian of X. Okay, cool. Now what I want to do is I'm going to solve for x hat here 
by inverting x transpose x and then moving that to the right hand side. Why is this useful? Well, now what I can do is I can multiply this entire equation through on the left by the matrix x, and I get x times x hat equals x times the inverse of the Gramian of x times x transpose times v. And now the last thing to observe here is that big x times x hat is the same thing as p times v. So I can make that replacement. And so now it took us a little bit of effort, but now we get something extremely elegant. P times V, which is the projection we're interested in, is the same thing as X times the inverse of the Gramian of X times X transpose times V. And the whole question from the outset is, what is what, how could I find a formula for the matrix P that does the projection for me? And the answer is now sitting here. We could use the definition P equals x times the inverse of the Gramian of x times x transpose to project our vector onto the vector space we care about. And again, what is big X here? Big X is a matrix whose columns form a basis for the space we're interested in. So this formula will now play an important role for us throughout the rest of the course. And this is called the projection matrix onto a vector space. So the projection matrix onto a vector space V, I like to notate as big P sub big V. And this is equal to X times X transpose times X inverse times X transpose, where X is any matrix whose columns form a basis of the vector space V. Again, what I want to point out here is that in this formula for projection sits the Gramian of the matrix X we're working with. Now, I have to issue a word of warning here because it's tempting to look at the projection formula and not fully appreciate its beauty. It's tempting to want to simplify it, but we can't simplify it generally. It's tempting to distribute this inversion sign, and uh, we can't do that. So it's, if, we, if we were to try to uh, distribute the inversion sign, the false equation here would be, well, we distribute the inverse sign across this product, which switches the order and then we invert. And that would give me X times X inverse times X transpose inverse times X transpose. And of course, X times X inverse would be the identity. And X transpose inverse times X transpose would be the identity. And that would tell us that the projection matrix is always just equal to the identity. This is a totally false equation. And the reason we can't do this is that when we construct the matrix X here, it will not necessarily be square. So X inverse does generally not exist. So don't do this. This is a huge mistake. We generally cannot simplify the projection formula like this. So let's look at an example. So here we're defining V to be the span of these two vectors. So these two vectors, we can look at them real quick and see that they're not multiples of each other. So they form a basis of the space. I can now attempt to construct my uh, uh, projection matrix. I'm putting these two vectors into the columns of a matrix, and I'm calling that matrix X. When I go to calculate the projection formula, I'm going to need to invert the Gramian of X here. Well, I can do that by uh, taking the Gramian, which in this case, X transpose X is this two by two matrix. I can augment that matrix with the identity and I can do my row reductions and out pops the inverse of the Gramian here. Now to calculate the projection matrix, I need to take um, the matrix X that I started with here and then multiply by the inverse of the Gramian of X, which we calculated up over here on the right. And then I need to multiply by the transpose of X. When I multiply all these matrices together, I end up with the projection matrix onto the vector space that I'm studying. And that's this three by three matrix highlighted in red here. So that's our first uh, uh, calculation of a projection matrix. And the thing I'd like uh, you to appreciate here is that the difficulty of calculating this projection matrix was in the inversion of the Gramian here. And this is going to become a reoccurring theme throughout the rest of the course.
Um, we're studying the gramian of this matrix and inverting it caused us a big a bit of a headache because to do that here we had to do some row reductions. Nevertheless, we solved the problem and we multiplied, uh, we applied the projection formula x times the inverse of the gramian times x transpose and we got our projection matrix.